what really matters now is not the interest of the marketers or the interest of the government. What matters now is the interest of the citizens of Nigeria. Here in Nigeria, the only the welfare package we enjoy, social welfare package we enjoy, was the subsidy. It has been removed. Now there's no subsidy on food. There's no subsidy on, on, on uh, medical. There's no there's no form of subsidy. There's no form of social welfare package that the federal government has designed for the citizens. So we are saying, if we the uh, fuel subsidy remains the only social, social welfare package that Nigeria should enjoy. So be it. So be it. Our focus today on the show is the rising pump price and its impact on the Nigerian economy. Let's get straight to the conversation. What's your stance on fuel deregulation and uh, this leeway granted by the government for independent marketers? Is it progress or sabotage and how will it impact business? The government and NMPC has not been fair on Nigerians. Um, from the time in memorial, I, I, don't, I don't understand the rationale by them saying that Nigerians, the marketers come by directly from Dangote refinery, they have to come to NMPC. I, I really want you to look at these indices properly. Look at, they said they've sold NMPC, that NMPC is now a private entity. I want Nigerians to do a search on who owns NMPC in the first place right now. A certain company, I don't want to mention their name, before the this government came into power, they were worth 70 billion naira. In one year of this government, that same company now worth 1 trillion naira. So there's so much behind NNPC handling this market and not allowing marketers to buy directly from Dangote. What are they hiding? And this government is so insensitive that they don't care about the plight of average Nigerians. In this country, somebody, your minimum weight cannot afford to buy a bag of rice. For us to talk about the fully deregulated market, you have to consider the economic impact on your citizenry. I don't care the politics they are playing between NMPC and Dango Terrifier. How does this impact on the average Nigerians? Go out on the streets. Nigerians are groaning under poverty, high cost of transportation. This, by the time they keep increasing the, this fuel price, it impacts on the, in almost everything that has to do with an average Nigerian. So, and these were the same people that fought against the regulation under President Goodluck Jonathan on the, uh, January 8th to 12th, um, 2012. Today, they are leading the matter of fully deregulated matter. Who is gaining from it? So, before we look at all this, have they come out to give us a template component on cost of refining and all those things? They are not, all, we just, all we just see, every morning they wake up, they increase prices. They have so crippled um, the NLC that they can't even talk anymore. The uh, uh, police arrested the NLC president and charged him for phantom sponsoring of terrorism. Since then, the man has gone under. We've seen from one level of intimidation from the, uh, to another from this government. So there is, a, there, there is a serious insincerity in the cost components of petrol and petroleum products in Nigeria in general. And the earlier that this government comes out before Nigeria and tells us how they arrived at this price, the better for each and every one of us because this. Nigerians are groaning under the impact of continuous increase in petroleum products. The marketers are only making more available in areas that there is acute scarcity. But what is, we are looking at the impact on Nigerian economy. How many people can afford to buy this fuel now? How can you claim that a state, a state like Lagos State consumes about 16 billion liters of fuel on a yearly basis? Are we drinking it? Do you know what 16 billion liters is? An average car, an average car, it takes about... Uh, from 50 to 75 liters to fill an average car. How can, how can you tell me a state like Lagos consumes about 16 billion liters of fuel on, on a yearly basis? Some of the figures were, uh, that are true now there is outrageous. Look at Singapore with their population. They don't consume as much as, as much fuel as Nigeria consumes. Look at India. Sometimes these people in, 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 in our regulatory bodies, they think Nigerians are foolish people. Just suppose what is happening in Nigeria and other advanced countries, you'll be wondering where they get these figures from. Even the subsidy, subsidy regime, when they were paying some, we all know it's a scam. They are claiming that um, people lift fuel from here and sent to Nigeria. It's possible, but not at the volume at which they are claiming. They inflate the numbers for their own selfish interest and benefit. Let's tell ourselves the truth. And Nigeria will not progress as a nation until we begin to hold these people accountable. Let them come out and tell us how they arrived at these figures. They just use they just throw figures right. around. I believe I just believe in that just to accept it. How do you?
determine our pricing with uh, these happenings and how has the surge affected uh, business operations and profitability? What are some of the adjustments that you are seeing with business that you have been monitoring? I, my worries are the insensibility of Nigeria leaders as it concerns uh, frequent or, 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 or uh, often increment to this product called PMS. And uh, we've seen over time that price of every other commodity revolves around or anchors around this very product called PMS. And yet they don't just care. Arbitrarily, they increase price to it. Not uh, knowing, they are aware. I wouldn't say they're they are unaware. They are actually aware of the impact, of, of the consequences of each increment to this commodity. Yet, they don't just mind or go ahead and pronounce it, go ahead and effect it. Do you know my worry? Let me tell you my worry. My worry is the traditional uh, orchestrated, or let me say artificial scarcity that comes every December or every festive period in our nation. History have it that every year, probably the month of uh, November to December, we will definitely see orchestrated or what they call artificial scarcity. And we are pro ap approaching a, a time of surge. So if this happens to come in Nigeria, the world before us as a people, if as at this moment, it is uh, well, not orchestrated and this is not called artificial, what of when this very one that comes uh, often every month when November, December comes upon us, then how much will people be buying for it? So that's my basic fear. So I don't know how we can alert the government or those in government to see how they can protect the citizens or motorists or uh, as it concerns uh, avoidance of any artificial scarcity coming upon the people, upon this. Another one coming. I, 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 I fear that fuel might likely sell up to 2,000 or 2,000 above. If, if, I use the word if, the usual artificial, uh, the uh, inbound month or December scarcity comes upon this. Integrity is not what you tell people what that you have is what you show people that you have. You don't know under conditions, Dangote, Dangote, in fairness to Dangote Refinery, they've been more than willing to inform Nigerians of what is happening. Remember, before they even got NMPC to the table about purchasing, they had to issue a lot of press releases that forced the hand of NMPC to invite them for a meeting. So we're, we are living, we are, we, are, we, are in, we are dealing with a government that is well orchestrated in hiding the truth and facts. So you won't blame Dangote. You don't know the conditions that are being given. And these are their regulators. You don't want them closed down. A government policy in Nigeria can shut down your business for good. So they need to tread on the part of caution. So I understand that dynamics. So I won't blame Dangote in any way. Now, we are grateful to God that independent marketers have stepped in on the scene. They, you can't silence them the way you can silence Dangote. If you silence one, you can't silence two. So it's a step in the right direction. Let them converse with Dangote. And let's see what will come out of it. That's what I'm saying. Let's pray it will not be a case of the hand of Esau and the voice of Jacob. That NMPC will through the back and be controlling that, the conversation through that uh, Dangote refiner. Let's pray that will not be the scenario because if it's a scenario, nothing will change. Not the, we don't expect the price of petrol to come down because if you even look at their body language, they are they are more willing for the price to increase than for it to come down. That is just the honest truth. This government is so insensitive to the plight of average Nigerians. They don't, if you complain or anything, they send you bags of rice to the states. If you complain of what uh, flood, they send you bags of rice. If you complain about food, they send you back. I think rice is the problem with the citizens of this country. Even the rice has become unaffordable. A bag of rice in today's Nigeria is over 100,000 naira. Minimum wage is 70,000 naira for crying out loud. And governors are just issuing press release saying that I will implement them. I see if they're doing the, uh, they're, they're doing the workers a favor by announcing that they're, they're going to implement minimum wage. How, how can, do these people reason at all? Do they think our, our politicians are the most powerful all around the world, but they can't seem to reproduce what they are seeing outside of Nigeria, in, in, inside Nigeria? No Nigeria is begging for money. They are begging for food to eat. The situation is appalling. The situation is getting out of hand. I wonder what this government will come before Nigeria in 2027 to say they have done. And I also blame the citizens of this country. When they, they, when they stopped collecting money to vote for Chalatazin to power, that's when change begins to happen in this country.
If you collect 10,000 naira and vote, how, how long will the 10,000 naira sustain you? Look at the charade that happened in the Edo election. We, the earlier we start holding our institutions accountable for all the nonsense that is happening in this country, Nigerians will not change. See the meeting that you're having with uh, Dangote Refinery, don't you think that uh, the NNPC should also, and major marketers should also be in that meeting for there to be a kind of uh, transparency? The issue is, that it is good for us to notify the people of Nigeria that this meeting will not really bring a relief to us per se. We might just enjoy a temporary relief because with that, uh, it's still uh, what you call a command pricing market. A, a command pricing market or a control pricing market. But ordinarily, it ought not to have been a we meeting to negotiate a price. We should be in uh, the comfort of our business environment or house to hear what you're selling, to hear what A is selling, to hear what B is selling. So this brings me back to my point again. Until we see intensive, aggressive competition in this sector, then we will never get a, a relief. So what should be the dimension, four dimension to competition? The four dimension to Competition should be, should be selling and announce its price. That the uh, operators of the four Nigeria owned refineries at Portaco Cardinal Worry will be operating. And we have advocated that these operators shouldn't be NNPC, it should be privatized to private friends that will give uh, a good competition, a good fight to Dan Gutierrez against his uh, game theory approach to competition. Until we see competition, then there won't be a relief or succor to the people of Nigeria as it concerns pricing. The instability and the uh, fluctuation will remain at its ease. So we should call for competition, intensive competition in the industry. A good case study should be the telecom industry. When uh, we saw competition, the price of this uh, network, uh, the SIM card, reduced aggressively. The line I'm using right now, I bought it about 40,000. 40, second week that NTN was launched. But now we can see gross physics price. It is like physics. Now some lights are even costing uh, uh, at the rate of uh, 500 pounds. So until we see competition, there, there won't be a relief in this sector. Now, for the sake of the masses, I know uh, Obum Osigwe has been really uh, bent on that particular conversation. How can the government balance your interests and that of the public? What really matters now is not the interest of the marketers or the interest of the government. What matters now is the interest of the citizens of Nigeria. The interest of the citizens of Nigeria in any economy, when government was saying they were uh, removing subsidy, dismantling subsidy, that's good. We, we have actually advocated for the removal of fuel subsidy before the May 29, when Mr. President in his in inaugural speech said subsidy is gone. We have always advocated, but the issue was an issue of timing. The argument was an issue of timing. We have stakeholders advocated and submitted that subsidy should be removed, but it should be removed when Nigeria uh, own refineries are working at optimal capacity. That should be the favorable time. But Mr. President was quick and we described that removal at e-timing, at uh, the removal of waste subsidy at the wrong time. And hence we see these uh, consequences. And I don't even care the consequences. So now who, whose interest should be paramount to us is not that of marketers, it's not that of uh, Dangote PSC, it's not that of the federal government, but the citizens of Nigeria in every economy, in every developed economy, the, 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 there is a welfare package by the citizens, by the government given to the citizens. You, you can hear about uh, railway transportation, so cheap in London, so cheap in America. You can, there, there is a, a, you can hear about free medical program in America. There could be. So now here in Nigeria, only the welfare package we enjoy, social welfare package we enjoy, was the subsidy, it has been removed. Now there's no subsidy on food, there's no subsidy on, on, on uh, medical, there's no subsidy in, in, in schools, there's no, there's, no, there's no form of subsidy, there's no form of social welfare package that the federal government has designed for the citizens. So we are saying, if uh, the uh, subsidy remains the only social, social welfare package that Nigeria should enjoy, so be it, so be it. So this subsidy that was removed on PMS, it was diverted to where? The world. Who are the owners of NMPC as it is presently owned? How do you explain that a company was worth 70 billion naira and within one year that company is now worth about a trillion naira? Until we begin to ask questions, as a nation, as a citizen, we will not go anywhere. There's so much happening under this government 
that Nigerians are, that, that is being covered up. The truth be told, this government does not have human face. And I'll to start holding them accountable, things won't get better because they don't have conscience.